Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we are going to look at counter examples to the Noetherian condition. So firstly, let's look for a ring that is not Noetherian. A non Noetherian ring. A very obvious example of a non Noetherian ring is to look at the ring of polynomials in infinitely many variables. So you take R to be just fix a field K and you take infinitely many variables x1, x2, x3. So here K is any field. What does this mean? Well, an element of this ring is just a finite set of monomials in the variables x1, x2, x3. So finite sums of expressions of the form a x i1 to the d1 x i2 to the d2 x i r to the dr so we just take a finite sum of expressions of form the result is called a polynomial in infinitely many variables so each monomial in this is still finite and you're still taking only a finite linear combination of such monomials now this thing is non-noetherian because you can construct what I call a strict ascending chain of ideals. So let IR be the ideal generated by X1, X2 up to XR. So I'll just call this X1, X2. So what this is, is it's the set of all um, elements of R of the form x1 times f1 plus xr times fr where f1, f2, fr are arbitrary elements of R. And this is the general notion of an ideal generated by a finite set of elements. And clearly these are ideals and we have i1 is strictly contained in I2, which is strictly contained in I3 and so on. So we have a strict ascending chain of ideals showing that R is not a Noetherian ring. We've seen that when R is a um, Noetherian ring, then every submodule of a finitely generated R module is again finitely generated. When R is not a Noetherian ring, you can always find a finitely generated R module which has a submodule that's not finitely generated. To see this, let's take the same, um, well, I'll just illustrate it using the same example of a non Noetherian ring R equals uh, k x1, x2, x3, the polynomials in infinitely many variables. So let's take as an R module R itself. Think of R as an left R module. Now this is a finitely generated R module. It is just generated by a single element, the unit of R. Now <clears throat> in this R we had um, strict ascending chain of ideals.
let i be the union of these ideals then i is again uh, an ideal and so it is a sub module of r it's an r sub module it we've discussed this before that ideals of r become sub modules of r when we regard r as an r module then i claim that i cannot be finitely generated why is that suppose it is uh so generated as an r module suppose it is then say i is generated by um let's say some elements m1 m2 mn then uh there exists a large number capital n such that mi belongs to i n for all i equals 1 to n because each mi uh, belongs to some ir and uh, then it belongs to all the i uh, i ss for s greater than r so so beyond some point each mi belongs to some ir and all the irs that come after it and just take the largest of these numbers and all the mi's will be con belong to one of the ideals i n but then uh, that means that i n is equal to i because the mi's actually generate i but this contradicts our assumption that i n is properly contained in i n plus 1 which is contained in i so i is always going to be a sub module of a finitely generated r module that is not finitely generated okay in this uh, example of course i was keeping in mind the ring r of polynomials in infinitely many variables but i didn't actually use that anywhere i just used the fact that r has a strict ascending chain of ideals so this works for any non noetherian ring r every ring whether noetherian or not admits non noetherian modules let's look at a construction of that so take r to be any ring and take m to be the module which i will write as follows n equals 1 to infinity r so the direct sum of infinitely many copies of r what this is is it's the space of all sequences r n n goes from 1 to infinity so it's like sequences r1 r2 r3 such that r n is equal to 0 for all but finitely many n then inside m you can look at mn or mr let's say to be the sub module consisting of sequences rn such that rn equals 0 for all n greater than or equal to r then we have m1 is properly contained in m2 properly contained in m3 etc so this is a strict ascending chain therefore m is not an noetherian r module another interesting um, example of a noetherian r module non noetherian r module is something you are all very familiar with uh, just take r to be the ring z of integers and take m to be the rational numbers but don't think of it as a field think of it as a z module uh, 
okay so clearly you know you can uh, add two rational numbers you can multiply a rational number by integer to get an integer uh, to get another rational number and that gives the set of rational numbers the structure of an r module now i claim that this r module is not noetherian how i'll construct you um, a chain in a, a strict ascending chain take mn to be all rational numbers uh, which are of the form 2 to the minus n times an integer then uh, these are all rational numbers whose denominators um, are uh, divide 2 to the power n and so clearly you have um, m1 properly contained in m2 properly contained in m3 and so on this is a strict ascending chain and you can easily check that these are actually sub modules of q z sub modules of q so q is not a noetherian z module what are the finitely generated sub modules of q So suppose we have a submodule of Q, uh, which is generated by let's call this submodule uh, U, and U is the submodule generated by some rational numbers Q1, Q2, Qn. then I can multiply out all these rational numbers by some large integer say the product of their denominators take there exists n belongs to z such that n q 1 n q n are all integers and now you take g c d of these integers that's going to be an integer and divide it by n and call that q so let q be 1 over n times the gcd of n q1 n q2 up to n q n then i leave it as an exercise to you to show that u is just the z sub module generated by q ie u is just z times q all the integer multiples of q so every finitely generated z submodule of q is just generated by one element mm -hmm.